Welcome to The Tech Show, I'm Sonia Gavankar, and this week we may have your new COVID career. Plus, we have two beauty experts to help us safely navigate from seven day sweatpants to acceptable humans. All that and more coming up on The Tech Show. Now it's time for the latest. Last week, President Trump signed legislation extending the deadline for small businesses to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program, enacted in the weeks following the economic shutdown caused by the coronavirus pandemic. The original deadline to apply for the PPP just passed, but $130 billion still remained in the fund out of the $660 billion allocated. Both houses of Congress approved the extension unanimously, and so businesses will now have until August 8th to apply for the assistance, which is forgivable as long as it is used to pay employees like restaurant workers who cannot work during the pandemic. The program sponsors say they want to repurpose the program to better serve the challenges that businesses are facing now, several months into the pandemic. It faced criticism after loans went to multi-million dollar businesses such as restaurant chain Potbellies, the coal company Halidor Energy, and video storage firm Quantum, all of which received $10 million, the most the PPP will give to any one business. If you've been furloughed and are looking for a work from home gig, odds are your state is still hiring contact tracers. Contact tracing, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, is an essential part of the multi prong approach to fighting the COVID 19 pandemic. Because people with COVID 19 often don't show immediate symptoms and may not know they have the illness until they receive an official diagnosis, contact tracers will help the infected person remember and identify the people they have been in close contact with during their diagnosis period and the two days leading up to it. This will be done by asking questions about where the person has been and who they've been in close proximity to at work, at home, and maybe even in a car. Once those exposed individuals are identified, contact tracers will then make a list of those people and contact them. Next, tracers advise positive individuals to stay home and maintain social distancing from other people for 14 days after they've been exposed to the virus. During this time, the exposed individual will be encouraged to check their temperature twice a day and monitor whether or not they develop any COVID-19 symptoms like coughing or shortness of breath. Contact tracers will then check in with these individuals periodically to ensure that these self-monitoring steps are being taken. In the event that symptoms do arise, it will be suggested that the person notifies a healthcare professional for medical care. In New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo says he's expected to employ 6,400 to 17,000 tracers statewide, depending on the projected number of cases. To fill these positions, the state is requiring candidates to fill out an application and complete an interview before taking Johns Hopkins' free online COVID-19 contact tracing course. After the course, candidates will have 72 hours to pass the course's assessment before they become eligible to be hired for the role. Requirements and salaries vary by state and county, but many positions start at $50,000 per year. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Over 70 years of experience in heart and aviation, the members of the Association of Flight Attendants know the realities of the aircraft cabin better than anyone. We don't just serve drinks, we save lives. We don't just negotiate contracts, we move major policy issues like the smoking ban, no knives on planes, clean water and safe food on board. The air we breathe matters and we stop the spraying of poisonous pesticides. The Association of Flight Attendants, stronger together, better together.
Due to months of sheltering in place, pet adoptions are up by as much as 70% compared to this time last year. With millions still out of jobs, there is concern that animal shelters may become overwhelmed as people face financial hardships and can no longer take care of their four-legged friends. With shelters already feeling the pinch due to limited or decreased funding, there's no better way to support your local shelters. Hannah Shaw, the kitten lady, is here to share some ways to give back to animals in need, including adding a new member of the family as an adoption or foster. Hello, Hannah. Thanks for being on the show. Hi, I'm Hannah Shaw, and I'm known as Kitten Lady. I'm a humane educator, and I'm an animal rescuer. The global pandemic has really hit animal shelters hard. You know, there's not as many staff on site. There's not volunteers on site. And of course, shelters can't have that same foot traffic to come in and see adoptable animals. But fortunately, people are really rising to the occasion. Uh, you know, there's an increase in adoptions right now. And importantly, there's an increase in foster homes. This is my foster kitten, Andy, and he's uh, one of the babies who's temporarily making a home at my house right now. Uh, so shelters are really uh, pivoting towards this strategy that's focused on getting animals out into homes, whether that be a foster home or an adoptive home. Uh, right now, a big way that you can help is by signing up as a foster parent or by adopting, or if you can't bring an animal home, then you can help by donating. Donate, you know, food or toys or blankets or something that every animal shelter really needs is litter. Uh, so you can participate in the Cats Pride Litter for Good program by just hopping on catspride.com. You can nominate a local shelter or rescue group to receive donated litter. And this program is so amazing because every single green jug that is sold donates a one pound uh, donation of litter to an animal shelter or rescue in need. So over 8 million pounds have already been donated to shelters, and that really, really helps. Um, every single uh, pound of litter that's donated helps offset the cost so that shelters can focus on, you know, spay and neuter and veterinary care and everything else that it takes to help animals get into homes. So you can visit catspride.com um, and nominate a local shelter or rescue group to receive donated litter. We've got to take another break, but we'll have fun with magnets when we return. Welcome back. With cities across the U.S. going through varying degrees of reopening and reclosing, many of us have not been able to access cosmetic services like manicures and massages or facials. One saving grace is that masks cover half of our faces, but that just means eyes are having a moment. And even if you aren't a pro at eye makeup, lashes are an easy way to add some glam and go. But what if you can't get your lashes done just yet? Julie Cangelosi, Mrs. DC America 2017 and nutritionist and fitness expert <laughs> is coming to us live from Puerto Rico with a solution for us all. Hello, Julie, how's Puerto Rico? Hi, it is absolutely amazing. I'm staring at the beautiful ocean right now as we speak. I can't wait to travel again, but <laughs> till we can, let's talk about lashes. Your lashes look amazing. Can you tell us Thank how you. we can get that look without risking going to the salon right now? Absolutely. So I used to have lash extensions for years and then we had our pandemic happen and I wanted to find a way that I could still feel glamorous at home. And as you said, still great even with a mask on. And I found these incredible lashes that not only um, can be used with either a magnetic liner or a mascara. It's safe, super easy, and I can change my look every day. And you don't have to, you know, sit there forever getting your lashes done, which is one of the reasons I don't do it. I, I don't have the time to do that. So talk, walk me through how this works. There's like a liner and then the lashes. So tell me what we're working with here. Absolutely. So it is very easy to use. You use the liner just like any other liner. You just open up the container. I always recommend streaking it through your hands for the first time. And you're going to apply your first coat. Okay. And to make sure you have the best um, connection for your lashes, you're actually gonna make two coats for it. Okay. So after that one minute, you are gonna add that second coat. And then after the second coat, you'll be ready to apply your lashes. Now, I know you have a few there in front of you. We have very natural looking lashes, or we have even larger, bigger glam lashes. Okay, so second coat on and then, um, 
So there's nine to five cocktail party and Wonderlash. Since it's not after you know seven o'clock, I'm gonna go with the in between for the super glam. So, so walk me through this. I'm just gonna pop the. Is this how easy it's gonna be? I'm gonna just pop this right onto my lash it's and it's gonna stick. Very easy. As soon as it is dry, you are just gonna start from the inner corner, and it will. You'll start to see it just connect right into your liner. Okay, Julie, I have done these before, and I I'm gonna see. <laughs> how this goes because I'll, I'll see it when I be believe it when Let's I see, see it here. The magic right, of inner lash. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's like, it's, oh. I, I did a bad job on that, but now I can take it off easily. There's not gonna be any glue that sticks to it. No. Wow. And you'll get your instant glam look. Ooh, and you can make glamorous. that adjustment, Look. taking them on and off, and now your eyes just pop. Okay, now, so I'm going actually from the outside in because I think that's, like, how I can guide it. But, you know, it's, like, to each his own, right? Wow, these are super easy. I have, I mean, I'll, this is surprisingly easy. <laughs> Being someone who travels normally three to four days a week, it is super easy just to pack them in my suitcase and go. I am so glamorous right now, Julie. Wow. Okay, I love so, them. Okay, so they're easy, and that's important. But let's talk about people who have, you know, any sort of, um, you know, sensitive eyes or contacts. Or, or, you know, do we need to worry about anything here if we have sensitive, mm -hmm. if we're sensitive to um, different kinds of makeup? Um, and are these ethical? Absolutely. So they are cruelty free. They're vegan and paraben free. Wow. which is absolutely incredible. We have two different types of liner. We have our newest liner that just launched that was made here in the USA, and that's especially made for those who have sensitive eyes. I will say I wear contacts every day, and I use our traditional liner, and I have not had an issue. I just absolutely love them. And the eyeliner comes in several colors, or black is our only option? We Nope. We have it in black, gray, or brown. Ooh, gray. I think you need yeah. to send me some gray. I want to try that. Okay, this is incredible. <laughs> now, I am a little bit of an expert in putting on lashes, I would like to believe. But <laughs> I, I've also tried other magnetic lashes that are kind of like the sandwichy ones, and they right. are impossible to use. I, I find these incredibly easy. One of the things that are also in here are these like tiny little guys. What am I supposed to do with this? Yes. So those anchors, well, you have two options for the anchors. You can either apply your lashes strictly with the anchors only, which some of my clients do, or you can use them for the corners of your eyes just to make sure everything connects. And it goes underneath your natural lash line and it just sandwiches your natural line between the two magnetic pieces. And it really just helps the longevity of them all day long. So I typically wear my lashes from 6 a.m. till sometimes 10 or 11 p.m. and they stay on all day with the help of those anchors. Now, which side is the, which side works? I'm not totally sure I'm doing this right. They kind of like come out, which you way do I go? You wanna make sure it's curved up. Curved up, the okay. The curl up is where your magnet will be able to oh, yeah. work together. And you can use it either with your hands itself or little tweezers that we have as well. Yeah, no, these are really great. And I mean, the ones I'm wearing are a little bit dancing with the stars. Maybe, you know, you wouldn't <laughs> be able to get, get away with them every single day. But when we can go outside, when we can go out, these are loads of fun. Um, how, how many times can I wear these? Or like, what, tell me, do I have to wash this off every night, reapply the liner? What kind of upkeep am I looking at here? So very simple upkeep for the lashes itself you can remove your liner with any oil based remover we also have our own liner um i'm sorry remover that we also sell and each lash can be used for 30 to 40 times wow. so they do give you that nice longevity with them and they're very simple to have the upkeep and clean that's amazing where can we find out more so you can go directly on my website eyelashqueen.net and of course, if you're gonna, you know, post pictures of yourself looking amazing with your mask on, you know, for the selfie, what kind of like, do we need to be tagging you maybe? Absolutely, we'd love the tag. You can find me on Facebook at Julie Cantalosi, or of course on Instagram as well with the eyelash queen.
Welcome back to The Tech Show. Our first guest today is Kathy Liu, owner of Spa Logic in Washington, D.C., here to tell us what we should look for when returning to our salons. Hello, Kathy. How are you and your staff doing? Uh, we are doing great. Uh, me and myself, our staff, we are happy to be back. Uh, we're happy to see our clients and they have the staff very happy uh, that you know, the Spa Logic uh, took this COVID-19 very seriously. Uh, we use that deep cleaning and we do sanitation disinfection the whole salon three times uh, during the COVID-19 and before we return to reopening on June 1st. So before you opened, what kind of precautions did you take for your staff? Because before we opened, we, we did um, uh, took everything out. We passed everything that would belong that just on the surface uh, and we took out all the paper, everything, magazine. Um, we we did a lot of for uh, for the period of time, uh, and uh, we came in like a week or two before the reopening. We did the deep cleaning, and also we scheduled the the company uh, professional come in and do different types of spray, uh, as you see in the video. Um, and other than that, um, we just take seriously with this uh, COVID nineteen still. Um, very precautious. Um, we have hand sanitizing and then we require the staff to wear masks and the shield mask. We also put the curtain in the hand salon in between each client. And we also put the barrier on between pedicure and manicure area and then the shield in front of the staff and the client so they don't have direct contact with each other. As clients, what should we be looking for before we go back to the salon? Are there any precautions that we should be taking before coming in? Uh, we do a temperature check uh, on client, also staff, um, and they have to wear masks. And when they enter, uh, come into the salon, a client must wear masks, staff also the same thing, and wash their hands before their service call, and also hand sanitizer that we have. I just want to share with you that, you know, client and staff safety is our priority. Uh, we are working diligently and enhance the salon experience in response to COVID-19. We're expanding our cleaning program by wiping down, you know, each client after they get out, we clean. Uh, they almost wear masks before they come into the salon, you know. Um, we do temperature training for the COVID, also the COVID consent form. Everybody comes to the salon, they have to sign that form. A hand sanitizer, disinfectant, each patient that put most uh, we we provide in the salon. And the client, if they're coming in and they don't have a mask, we have a mask for them to, to use. What kind of technology did you use to make sure that you're keeping everybody safe? We do have a disinfectant and we, uh, we uh, use, a, what do you call it? A, uh, Disinfecting machines that we have in the salon from the car. We have four floors, so each floor we all do have disinfecting machines. Uh, very high tech, a uh, medical grade. Um, and we use the hospital disinfecting uh, spray between uh, pedicure areas, but also we use the pedicure disposable liner for, each, for pedicure and manicure. So that's the safe for each client as well. So Kathy, Spa Logic is a full service salon. So, what kind of offerings do you have there? Uh, we offer from head to toes, you know, manicure, pedicure. We do hair uh, service. We have facial massage. We do eyelash extension, eyelash lift, and also myself doing um, micro pigmentation, meaning uh, cosmetic tattoos. Are there any services that you are not offering right now because of health issues? Uh, if something is direct to a lip that they wear mask, uh, we don't offer. It's like uh, a lip tattoo. That's something that we are not doing it right now, but any other service that we are doing right now. We wanted to ensure what that each of us and the clients that come to our door is have peace of mind and feel safe. And lastly, you know, we have a lot of comments. The client that came in the salon, they're really happy with the result. They're really happy to see what we did. They say, you guys can be very serious. And I'm very happy to see it. And I'm still more comfortable to coming. And I would tell my friends and you know, my family. And some of them share that they have been going to different salons to get their head and that they did not take this off, you know, like extra carefully. 
and they did not have any they don't the fat don't wear masks and the fat they don't they don't have a barrier in between the hair station so I say I don't feel comfortable to go back so I'm so happy to see that your website that you have or the video you show that you did and we also maintaining monthly so every month we have the company coming in and do um, the COVID disinfectant spray or from the whole building. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you and your staff stay safe in these uncertain times. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Coming up is Take My Money right after this break. where this week we look at a bracelet that wants to save lives. People can live their lives fully without making compromises for their safety. We started Flare because we want to have a dialogue about how people actually experience safety using data, but also using real feedback from literally thousands of people. We bonded in friendship and over our shared experience with sexual assault. And the more and more we went out in the community and talked to women, we realized that our stories weren't at all unique. Every woman I know of has had a flare moment. It's those moments when you don't feel comfortable and you need a way out, but you need something really subtle. We want you to have confidence acting earlier in the moment and doing what's right for you. That helps you get out there and do more things. All the things that you love to do, whatever that is. Flair wants to help you do that. It's true we're not going to a crowded bar anytime soon, but this is great to have wherever you are. Flair, go ahead and take my money. Thanks for joining us this week. Follow us at the Tech Show TV and join the conversation. Check you later. I love this.